You have probably used Git to push code to GitHub or collaborate on a project. But how do companies like Google, Meta, and Amazon use Git? When thousands of engineers are committing to code bases measured in terabytes. In this video, we'll break down how big tech managers Git at scale, their workflows, their custom tools, and why trunk-based development keeps showing up again and again. Let's jump in. Previously, we have covered the foundations. Let's zoom out and see how big tech companies manage their enormous code bases with Git and other version control systems at scale. Each of these companies has thousands of developers and massive code bases. Let's start with Google. Now, while most teams use Git, Google doesn't, at least not in the traditional sense. Google is famous for keeping most of its code in single monolithic repository or monorepo. Their code base is just too massive. We are talking about billions of lines of code, tens of thousands of engineers, and over 40,000 commits per day. Half by humans, half by bots. To handle this, Google built its own version control system called Piper, and a cloud-based workspace system called CITC, Clients in the Cloud. It's not Git, but the core ideas are familiar. Check out, change, submit. What makes Google unique is how they work. They use one giant monorepo and almost everyone commits to the same main branch, the trunk. Yes, Google strongly practices trunk-based development. No long-lived branches, no endless rebases. Instead, features are hidden behind feature flags until they are ready to go live. And to keep this trunk stable, Google relies on an army of automation. Every change triggers automated tests. Peer review is required through an internal tool called Critique and the system can even refactor APIs across the entire code base. At Google, everything starts with trunk-based development. Engineers don't work on long-lived branches. They integrate early and often into one main line, the trunk. Now, what if the feature isn't fully ready? Instead of holding it back, they use feature flex, allowing incomplete work to be merged and toggled off in production. Everything flows into the Piper monorepo. Google's internal version control system. Engineers may use short-lived branches, but the final destination is always the trunk. Developers work in isolated CITC workspaces sync to the latest trunk. This keeps everyone up to date, even with thousands of commits flying in daily. And when a change is ready, it goes through Critic, Google's internal code review tool. Once it gets the green light or LGTM, automation kicks in. This includes automated test, static analysis, and even auto-merge, rebase, or reject. If something breaks, bots can fix or block it, keeping the trunk always green. For big changes, like an API refactor, tools can programmatically update their entire code base. No waiting on 200 teams, the refactor just happens. And once everything passes, the change list is submitted, and the process repeats. Meta, like many others, started with Git. As the code base grew into a monorepo, performance issues started showing up. Git wasn't built for repositories this massive. Operations like git status or git commit began taking minutes, and the problem was only getting worse. So they pivoted, switching to Mercurial, a Git-like distributed version control system. Why Mercurial? Because it was more flexible and open to performance optimization. Meta engineers poured in custom tooling helping Mercurial scale to handle terabytes of code and thousands of daily commits. And out of this came Sapling, a custom front-end built by Meta. It works with both Git and Mercurial under the hood, offering a smoother, faster experience, especially for large repositories. It was designed for engineers working with stack diffs, rebasing, and integrating quickly with Trunk. Meta's engineering culture leans heavily on Trunk-based development just like Google, but they take it further with stack diffs, small incremental commits layered on top of each other. Engineers frequently rebase and squash their commits before landing them on main, keeping history clean. And if something breaks, no rollback mm. drama, they fix forward, patching bugs on the trunk itself and moving on. In short, Meta ditched Git for performance, but kept the Git mindset, fast commits, small changes, one main line and they have even open sourced some of that tooling like Sapling, so the rest of us can benefit too. Unlike Google or Meta, Amazon doesn't have one giant code base. Instead, it's all about decentralization. Think two pizza teams, 
small autonomous groups each owing their own microservice. That means thousands of Git repos, not one monorepo. Each team manages their code base, their pipelines, their releases, often using trunk-based or PR-driven workflows. This multi-repo setup avoids giant scaling issues but introduces a new challenge, coordination across repos when services need to talk. On the tooling side, Amazon has their own stack, like AWS code commit for Git hosting and code pipeline for CI-CD. A commit triggers test, builds, and deployments, often going straight to prod after passing checks. So while Git use varies by team, the common thread is move fast, keep your service deployable, and own your pace of the system. It's the opposite of Google's monorepo, but perfect for Amazon's service-first culture. One fun fact, people sometimes joke Amazon has many little monorepos, one per team. So that's how big tech uses Git, from Google's monorepo to Meta's stack devs to Amazon's micro-repo agility. The tools may differ, but the goals are the same. Move fast, stay safe, and scale without chaos. And if you found this video helpful, share it with your team or drop a comment about the workflow your org uses. Until next time, happy committing.